Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. to the agenda? Um, I would like to move 8A up to after communications and public comments, if you don't mind. I would do. Thank you very much. I don't. Are there any extra agendas? Andy? I can make one. I gave up my last one. <laughs> <You got> one. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I'll just follow. That's okay. I'm sure it's all going to happen. There are tablets behind you. Okay. The only adjustment is 8A moved up below four. Oh, you didn't do that. Behind communications. No, I did my whole, I'm not going to make a whole packet for them. And review and approve board minutes of November 25th, board minutes of December 9th and 19th. Anybody have any changes that need to be made? So moved. So they were. Sorry. Deb has Deb a Redmond. motion. Yep. yep. Seconded. I'll second. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Right. Aye. 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 Communication and public comments? Doesn't look like we have any. We are. We're going <laughs> to move to 8A Stevens and Associates presentation for driveway, parking lot, wastewater, drainage work. So let me um, roll things out and introduce Corey. Um, just again, as a reminder, you folks are very busy. We do a lot of stuff here. Um, oh, at the beginning of the school year, let's just say, we went out to bid to get, um, to have some folks come in and give us um, some big picture information about the cost to do driveway, parking lot, and drainage improvements. We did that because we have talked about it for years. Um, it has been um, a topic near and dear to the Buildings and Grounds Committee. And so it was time to figure out how much would this cost us to do. Um, and so Corey and Ham from Stevens and Associates did a lot of the heavy lifting on this for us. Um, if you are a member of the Budget Committee, you are one of the lucky ones to get a hard copy of one of these, and I think Corey's going to show that. He's got some more right there. Um, and uh, this hand, I don't know if you made some more of these. I've got, that's okay, I can make some more, but um, I, actually I made a few extras of those too. Um, but it's really stuff you're going to see up here. But um, we talked with the, um, the Budget Committee about the fact that there are essentially six sections. This was divided into six sections in order for us to get cost estimates on each of those sections so that if the board is interested in going out to the voters um, for a bond to get this done and pay it back over 10, 15, 20 years, whatever makes the most sense, we would have reasonable numbers to work with. Now, the disclaimer here is these are their estimates for the cost. Um, and without stealing any of Corey's thunder, they've built in some um, very reasonable but thorough contingencies. Um, so what it will actually cost us, I'm confident, would be um, not more than what we're looking at here, and probably less if things go well, um, if we were to do this work. So having said that, Corey, you want to no, do your thing? Um, before I get started, does anybody want another copy of this? Um, it may be difficult to see when we're on the screen. And I can, I've got nine more here if people want to. I got one. Yeah. You do you I'll see you around one in there, but what? You go on. I got one. If you have a, <laughs> what do you need two? I'll take one. I do not have extra of no. these. Oh, not that. Oh, oh, I, oh, I do have extras yeah, of those, yeah. though. The drawings are all extra.
I have a slide with the cost. I'm sorry, I didn't bring extra copies of the ones Thank with the cost, but it sounds like Chris has them. So thanks for having me. My name is Corey with Stevens & Associates. I'm a partner and a civil engineer down in Brattleboro, Vermont. I just have a few slides I'll take you through quickly, give you kind of a quick summary of what we did, and then open it up for discussion. Um, as Chris said, it's important that you guys know within these costs is not just the hard costs for the contractor to do the work, but also the soft costs <coughs> for our engineering fees, for a topographic survey, and then for some testing that we would recommend you do during construction to actually test the pavement. Uh, we carried allowances for the permitting, and then we also have included the overhead and profit for the contractors, an estimate contingency for our own work, because this is schematic level, and an owner's contingency, which we always recommend that you folks carry during construction in case there's a surprise during construction. So, get right to it. Uh, this slide shows the blue line is the property line, if we need to refer to that as we're going through our discussion. Uh, that's a really sharp Google Earth map. And we looked at all the paved surfaces on the property. So starting down at Route 5, Section 1 comes up and around and is what we call the access road. Section 2 starts in front of the building and Section 2 is in front of the building and the bus drop-off loop. Section 3 is the small access drives into the student parking lot and the access drive out. Section 4 is the access road behind the building and then the parking that's behind the building. Section 5 is an alternate. The buses that I understand are owned <coughs> by the school district, yep, right? The district, yep. um, they park on gravel right now and that is, uh, there's an alternate that we did a, a budget for to pave that section. And then section six is, it shows up a little bit. You can see the gravel road coming down from the, the ball fields and the tennis courts, goes through the woods here and it comes out onto the paved road right there. So that's got some concerns I'll get in a, a little more into. Uh, so section six is the gravel walks behind the building and the gravel road. We just put those two together. So this is a summary of the proposed work. Um, you have it in front of you. I'm going to be super brief, but this is kind of the, the where we are in our process right now. We are not done with our work. We're working with Jim and Chris, and there is an opportunity to phase these improvements. Um, we have some recommendations on how that would be done. There's some opportunities to do some of the work uh, year on year um, or to prioritize the improvements. So we're looking for feedback and, and what the budget might be from the school district that they want to move forward with before we finalize our work. And I guess I'll take the opportunity now to say that some of the associated costs with the construction work will shift a little bit depending on priorities. Um, things like engineering fees, topographic survey, and the drainage improvements that we're going to uh, need to do may, may be higher with one phase than with the other. Um, so I'm sorry this is a little bit blurry, but again you see section one, um, we did <coughs> quite a bit of research. Uh, we did two site visits. We actually did borings along the road to examine the condition of the existing asphalt. And that section we are recommending is reclaimed so they would grind up the asphalt. That asphalt, which is four to five inches thick, would get mixed into the top 10 inches of the existing gravel layer, thereby strengthening your gravel subbase. And then we'd put four inches of new asphalt on top of it. Section two, we have a curb that goes along the sidewalk in front of the building. So it's not appropriate to do that same process in front of the school because we would make the curb line go from six inches to two inches and that wouldn't look good, work well, and it would cause drainage issues. So the blue section two, we would pull out the existing asphalt and put down fresh asphalt. 
Section three is the student parking lot, which is red. <coughs> and in that section, we would again do this reclamation. Um, a common term in this part of the country is called bow magging. You may hear that term from other people. <coughs> uh, bow magging uh, is the name of the piece of equipment, but reclaiming the asphalt, grinding the asphalt up, mixing it into the gravel. And in this section, we would also reset, there is curves around the entire student parking lot. We would pull those curves up. We estimate about 80% of those granite curbs are reusable and we would reset them and then we'd have to buy some new granite curbing. Granite curbing lasts for 100 plus years. So it's not worth investing in new granite curbing. We'll pull it out, uh, we'll replace some of it, we'll reset it. Section four, um, and I've broken this up into 4A and 4B for a, a couple reasons, but section four would also be reclaimed because there's not curbing in that section and then get fresh asphalt on it. And then of course the alternate where it's uh, currently gravel, the yellow section, we would pull out the top 10 inches of uh, <coughs> material that's back there. This is primarily an old gravel pit, so we don't have too much concerns about the material, but uh, it has seemed muddy when we've observed it and just be cleaner to pull out six inches of that, of that dirt on top and put down some fresh gravel and asphalt. We have carried an allowance in areas that um, need additional work where we would actually dig out the gravels and put down a geotextile, commonly called geogrid, bring in <laughs> fresh gravel prior to paving. And there are sections of the existing asphalt that show the potential for having what we call subgrade failure. So there's something going on two feet down um, that's causing some problems with the asphalt. But this asphalt is 50 years old. Uh, we're not aware that there's ever been any substantial road improvements to this asphalt in the last 50 years other than one or two one inch overlays. So we did examine the asphalt and it averaged four to five inches thick. So at some point there was probably some additional asphalt laid right on top, um, but nothing significant. It's well past its usable life. We typically recommend that you pave, you plan to do an overlay after 15 or 20 years, and your total usable life is going to be around 30 years. So it's well past that. It's done pretty well in the circumstances. This is a memo with preliminary budget numbers and I guess, I guess you can see all the pertinent information. Um, so again, related to this site plan, we've attached costs to those different sections. Um, and as Chris alluded to, we have contingencies in those costs. So as we've been discussing them, we've talked about ranges. These are the high ends of these ranges. I don't want to be the low bidder. <laughs> so. Um, I've got a healthy contingency in there for anything I may have, we may have missed kind of again at this schematic level budgeting. Um, and so we feel solid about these numbers if you were to move forward with them. And there's a note down below because this was primarily a paving project, but there are some drainage improvements that are needed. Jim helped us identify those. So within this number, is 145,000 of drainage improvements. Those are included in this number. And then soft costs, again, for topographic survey, final engineering, bidding, administering the project during construction, or managing the project during construction, and then testing, $140,000. But those two numbers are within this 1.6 million. And Chris, I would welcome any anything else you think I should touch on. Um, I don't. I feel like you've hit the highlights of the actual work and cost. Yeah. Um, we talked about um, a good portion of this at the last budget committee meeting. Um, I My recommendation is for sections one, two, and three. There were some committee members that felt like if you're going to do some of it, we may want to do all of it, uh, but that is for further conversation. But um, yeah. 
So those are my slides, and I am more than happy to discuss this. A question on the uh, uh, on the access driveway going in. There are um, not speed bumps, but speed dips. Yep. Um, what is the what is the current what will be the current recommended solution for that problem? If the school board would like to keep them, I like traffic control. Um, I think those are better for plowing than a bump. You know, you have depressions out there, okay. and uh, I, I don't see any reason to alter what's out there. There's you ask Biden or people, you probably get Biden for opinions. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I know the Connecticut River region is not going to be under the three acre permit stormwater rulings for quite a few more years, but it is eventually coming down the pike for us. Um, does your, does this take into consideration? These are stormwater yeah. Um, related improvements. Yeah, so it's business. something that we've talked with Chris and Jim about already. Okay. Um, we have done kind of a cursory review of what the three acre rule might have, or what impact the three acre rule might have on this campus. So that this $145,000 on drainage improvements would be appropriately spent. Um, there's, a, there's another conversation there, um, but we are keeping an eye on that so that you're not putting good money after bad and having it <coughs> later. But I would also okay. note relative to that point, um, there is, that rule has not been set yet, and so any work that we're doing relative to that is would be our best guess as to how that's going to play out and what those final expectations are going to be. So yeah, it's a long ways down the road. So we talked, but within the lifespan right. of sure, the next oh, absolutely. And we're, so absolutely. we're paying attention yeah. to it. Yeah. I just want yeah. to acknowledge yeah. um, there isn't a three-acre rule book right now to right. to go all right we have to do this 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 and this so but yes we've talked about it and we've we're helping that. a couple other clients in kind of a similar fashion like without the final rule in hand how can we help you plan yep and that that could be an additional conversation but we're we're we're, we're taking it in consideration because we don't want to spend this money and then have to dig it back up uh, I have a question about the uh, the space that you've got marked uh, as Section Five. Uh, that's we right now have. Uh, that's the space where I believe the school buses are currently parked. Am that's I right? right? That's a gravel drive. Yep. Okay. Uh, the question, maybe this is outside of your area of expertise, but the question I have is uh, based on an understanding that uh, gravel that sitting vehicles like this on gravel uh, shortens their usable life to some degree. Shortens the bus's usable life? Yes. Well, that's interesting. And, and I, I'm, the reason I'm asking is because I'm trying to figure out if there's a justification based on that that would affect this. And I'm, I'm, as I'm speaking to you and as you're responding, I'm guessing this is something that hasn't come up, but I'd not, not like something to, I'm familiar with. I'd like to know more about. Well, let me that, speak to the yellow section there, section five, a little bit. Um, yeah. When we did our planning for this, I'm going to take the blame or the credit for that only because I said, well, you know, you're doing all this work. What if we paved there? So um, as I talk about how we might do less than all of that, for me, that certainly falls into the um, not necessary. It would have been one of those things where we didn't really have a sense for the total cost of this. And if the total cost came in um, really reasonable with that in there, I wanted to know that. But I will also note that it's the WNESU buses that park out there. Well, this, we're, uh, this is where I'm going with this, so. actually. Uh, uh, was if, it, if, this, <laughs> if this is something that helps. In fact, I, I have some discomfort of having them out open all year because I do think it da damages their usable lifespan and the question I'm I'm having is if we did this whether or not this is perhaps the as part asking the SQ to participate in the underwriting of this if it's going to help preserve their buses um, so I, I, I'm doing this mostly just because I want to see the look in Chris Pratt's face when I add some complexity to the administration you of this. Executive session if we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if those kind of words really uh, justify executive session, Chris. But I just want to 
to ask. Only if the young them. kids at home are watching. <laughs> <laughs> so um, during the uh, committee meeting, I actually uh, forgot to ask uh, Principal Hodson this. Was there any discussion in this plan about um, paving the uh, parking spots uh, up by Hadley Field? Um, I didn't ask about that. They didn't look into that because, quite honestly, I knew this was going to um, potentially cause, yeah, up there, yeah. Yeah. cause some hard swallowing when it comes to approving a number. So I didn't ask, and they didn't check. Nobody's going to get a grant. The only reason I say that is because, you know, it's if, you know, I mean, this is obviously a significant number, and I think it's great that we're moving with this, but, you know, I think, again, the appearance, you know, when we have games and whatnot, you know, it's kind of a disaster up there. The dirt, you know, the, the road, not, not the... So I, I didn't know if there was a possibility of, you know, maybe down the road... Or we added it in or whatnot. Um, just to, you know, out of curiosity. They didn't price it out. Okay. So. Okay. Question on the, um, the notes you had on the... Uh, sorry, can you go back to the, to the memo? Yeah. On the $145,000 um, and the $140,000 figures at the bottom. Are those tucked in individually, those section one, two, three, four, five, six, or are those added after lines, sections, the, the, the bar under section six? So a portion of this is carried in each of the sections mm -hmm. as the drainage, uh, you know, there's more drainage in sections two and three mm -hmm. than there is in section one. So yeah, this, I, I pulled these out because I, I wanted, you folks to know that it wasn't just construction costs for pavement mm -hmm. um but they are buried in <laughs> but if you'll note the, the lines the after total estimate costs included in the above cost are so it's not 1.6 plus 145 plus 140 that's included in those costs yep. and and again will vary depending <laughs> on the phasing okay so once we have an idea of which sections we move forward with We'll refine those numbers. And we have to tonight decide what to put on our Well if 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 the board wants this to be voted on by the taxpayers in this budget cycle, then this is where we are putting together our warning. We have to make a decision on tonight. Oh. Or or we make a decision to look at it more and wait a year. Exactly. That would be another decision. But a decision has to be made, yeah. Another question I had: What would the time frame be for the the overall project? Good question. So, um, depending on the phasing, I understand that we have about eight weeks, preferably six weeks, because nothing ever gets done exactly on schedule. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll plan for six and have a little have a little fluff there in the schedule. Um, I think that you could do sections one, two, and three in a summer. Um, it's actually only about two weeks of demo and a week of paving. It's just that there's a lot of other work to do that right. we don't think about. Like the drainage improvements is gonna take a couple weeks. You're inevitably gonna have some weather, yeah. So if we decided to do those plus the other green sections, with those other green sections, is it is it suitable to think that we could do those well schools in session? I mean, how would you how would you not do if you decide to do it all, you want to do it all at one time? Would you? Let me speak to the kind of the phasing piece of that. Um, I can't speak to whether you can do it when school's in session. I'm going to have to look to the people that, that run the school. Um, we've talked about a secondary way of means of access, because obviously people are still coming here in the summer. But in particular, section four, it's independent of the blue section. So you could stop <coughs> there and then come back to it, whether it be a month later or a year later. So. 
there's several directions you could go with this, but one scenario would be to bid it all out, see what the pricing comes back in, see what contractor schedules are, and if you ask for a schedule in parallel with the price, you actually may decide to spend, well, you guys, I don't know if you can spend more money on, on somebody who has a better schedule. But if there's oh, really yeah. bad weather and they can't finish, then they're still under contract to come back the following year and finish. I, I'm listening to this with some curiosity because uh, Grafton a couple years ago we explored a paving project where we were, there was a proposal to do it a mile at a time and the setup cost the setup and takedown costs were so high to do it in pieces that it really kind of blew up that proposal and I'm kind of hearing a suggestion that we can do it here without adding costs and I'm not sure I understand how that's possible. I don't think that's completely true. I think you're going to add some costs, inevitably. Um, but if we go back to bidding the whole thing out, mm -hmm. the contractor is going to come back to you with a price. And if they believe that they can do it in the six or eight week time frame that you're willing to allow them, there you go. then their that's cost the will be X. And if okay. something inhibits them from finishing, they're still obligated to come back and finish the following okay. year. So they're going they to build try that. Yeah, they could try to negotiate a change order based on delays, um, but contractually... So that I short that short window is almost inevitably suggests that you may have a takedown and set up cost that's wire, right. hardwired. That's okay, right. that's But if useful. they don't think they're going to finish, then they should put that into their bid. Okay, they thanks. Over that, that helps. Molly, I was wondering, I um, uh, in the terms of process here, um, we moved... 8A forward, are we going to do um, 8C, which would be where we would actually decide how much money to warn, uh, or how, how big a bit bond to warn? Are we going to do that now or are we going to do that a little later in the meeting? Oh, we can do it in new business. What's that? We can do it in order. Uh, so, so uh, not now. Right. We'll let Corey finish and okay. then we'll go on to that meeting. Let me, if I could, before we send Corey off, I just want to make sure that. Um, I want to kind of encapsulate this in a big picture sort of way. So we have been talking about the parking lot and the driveway for many, many years. Um, I have been very comfortable as the principal with what we've done so far. I can tell you I could be comfortable with us not doing anything, but you know, you can only do that for so long. It's already been noted that we have been very fortunate to get well past the life of the expected life of the driveway. So. That's, I think, important big picture point number one, that we've been talking about this for a while and we're at 50 years of the building. Um, we brought Corey um, and his team in. Their job was to give us, with reasonable detail, which I think they did a great job, of the expected costs. And they have built in a number of contingencies. We haven't gotten to the details of that. I talked a little bit about that with the, with the budget committee. Our next step would be to go out to bid for this. So. If we were to go out for, to bid, I would um, suggest that we put together a, a bid request where folks, kind of like the information we got from Corey, bid it by section, and then maybe a summary of sections one, two, and three, if there's cost savings by pulling them all together, but give us that kind of menu to pull from. However, if we go out for a million dollar bond, and then we go out to bid. I'm gonna exaggerate here. That might get us one section, it's not going to. Um, based on their um, estimated costs, it would probably get us three sections, but it might get us more than that. So what we then find out is, what does the bid come back with? And based on that, relative to the amount of money we asked for from the taxpayers, how much are we gonna be able to do? My, my point here is it's conceivable that, um, and, and I wanna acknowledge, Corey's note on um, be careful about, you know, scrutinize the bids. <coughs> Low bids, it might be you get what you pay for, but let's just say um, the, a really good bid comes in um, less than a million dollars. It doesn't mean that it's going to cost us a million dollars. It's going to cost us based on the bid and how much of the project we decide to do at that point. So at this point, what we're deciding is based on all this information, do we want to ask the taxpayers for a 
big pot of money, paid back over X number of years, 10, 15, 20 years, and if so, how much are we asking for? When we warn an article, is it um, not a, to borrow money not to exceed? Yeah, that's uh, what it would be. You know, the, the, the language would be uh, to, to warn an article not to exceed a million dollars to pave <coughs> sections one, two, and three yeah. of this. My language um, was up to, but yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, or <coughs> not to exceed um, uh, to, for a, a portion of this. And, and then, of course, it, then it goes out to be it after the voters have approved and the article. That's right. Yep. And then um, those bids come back to us yep. and we decide which <coughs> ones uh, we choose. Yep. And, um, and and perhaps one of them might might pay more or less of right. this, but you know, they, know they might vary. Just to break that out a little bit, there's a few bids that would go out. We would need a bid for engineering design, which would not necessarily be the same people that are doing the work. Yes. You'd have to, yeah. They've done their job. We're paying them, so they might they might bid for that engineering design, as an example. Um, potentially for construction oversight, again, could be the same people, maybe not. And then the big ticket item is bid for the construction work. So there's a number of bids that would go out <coughs> stepwise for that. And I would like to add that what Chris is alluding to we call allowances or alternates. So we'll work with you to come up with what are your priorities, but then if the bids were to come in very competitively, cost effectively, what would you like to do next to add on to that project to use that money? We also have the inverse. We always have a backup plan. We call it value engineering, but there's always something in this project that we kind of have that we could eliminate if we had to or approach it differently um, so that we could save money. So if those bids do come in high and you still want to do sections one, two, and three, we'll use that as an example. How could we make sure we get that <coughs> but trim a, little, trim a little money out of the construction budget? This may have been discussed already, uh, but uh, what are the risks associated with uh, delay for a year? The reason I'm asking is, you know, at projects like this, you can't delay forever, but you usually have some, some room. And I'm wondering, are we at the point where we don't have any? Uh, it would just help in terms of our being able to to understand and to promote this because some of this is new to me. Maybe it shouldn't be, but it is. And uh, I'm trying to figure out if I'm ready to vote the affirmative for it now as opposed to ever having looked at it a little further. Two things come to mind, and, and I'll refer to Chris and Jim to expand on this. One is what's your, <coughs> what's your annual maintenance cost? I, I don't think you're spending you know, hundreds <coughs> of thousands of dollars on maintenance. Um, but you're spending some amount of money to, to patch those driveways. Um, and the second is the drainage issues. Right. Um, if I was going to go back to this gravel drive, <coughs> it's washing out on a right. regular basis. And we've all seen that the storms are getting more intense around here. So the summer storms are washing gravel down in this pavement. I don't think that's causing any significant or permanent damage. Uh, I think it's just a headache to clean up, Jim. Um, but those are the two things that come to mind. With I don't see anything that couldn't wait a year. With the permission of the chair to talk, mention, to talk about this, I know, there we are, hi. Uh, the, I, I knew that we would be discussing uh, the drainage part of this. I just was caught a little by surprise by the extent of all the rest of it. And maybe they're not as separable as I thought they were uh, starting to sound that way. But I, one one was something that we could fit in, perhaps with a mod, either with a modest uh, bond or just incorporated into our into our budget. And the other is uh, obviously a, a million and six plus, and uh, the, what, you know, it's a big difference between those two. So can I just speak that? To we we got here <coughs> um, because of our building and grounds committee meetings. And you know we go through a list of things that Jim and Chris bring to us, and and we really don't have you know we've kept up they've kept the building up well, and there's not a lot of issues, but everybody keeps going back to that driveway. Everybody keeps going back to the drainage issues that we have every time there's a downpour, and that 
that's how we got here was because we we need to fix the drainage. It doesn't make sense to tear it all up to fix the drainage and not fix the driveway. Got it. Okay. And, and that's how that's why we're here. Okay. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I. I, uh, I am David Clark. We're <coughs> born in the late nineties, uh, alternatively, and. Um, uh, it was already a budget, a, a buildings and grounds issue in the <laughs> late 90s, um, you know, 20 years ago. Paul Bohowski was was very much wanting it uh, repaved uh, back in the late 1990s. Um, so uh, it has been quite a long time, actually. We did a research. And, and, and I, I myself was very resistant to spending that sort of money or even putting any <coughs> sticky black stuff down. Um, uh, but um, at this point, I do believe it is a, uh, it is sort of like the approach to the school, the door, doormat of right. the school, and it is looking very worn out. It is, um, and uh, it's, it also is something we would bond over a length period of time. I just a quick calculation with a, uh, a million dollar bond for, at 3% over 20 years would be 66,000 a year. Um, uh, it is um, certainly expenditure, um, and it would be certainly displacing other expenditures for 20 years. But um, it is something uh, that needs doing at some point, and we would certainly be spreading the costs out. Interest rates are extraordinarily good, actually, and 3% is probably probably higher than we'd have to face. But um, just plug that into calculator. I kind of referenced that with the bill, with the budget committee about this as <coughs> timing for the project. Timing is about 50-year driveway. Timing is about do we have a certain um, financial advantage to mm -hmm. take that on? Yeah. Now. Interest rates being that. Mm -hmm. yes. the, the point about interest rate is actually well considered because mm -hmm. there's no reason to think it's going to go down from where we are today. I, I, again, I like I said at the uh, the, <coughs> the uh, budget committee meeting. I, you know, I kind of all or nothing. I mean, I I, I wouldn't want to go keep going back to the taxpayers. You know, it's I think you know there's numbers here, something to you know think about. But I, I would hate to do one section one year and so on and so on. But with the permission of the chair, if we could uh, move on to the. Uh, yeah, does anyone have well. any other questions before so we can let him go and we'll move on to the meeting? Thank you very much. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. You're asking somebody that, you know, I sell trusses. I don't know about that. <laughs> Any policies? No, no, no policies at this time. Kind of feel like you're way away from me now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move on to report, superintendent report. Um, it's quite a lengthy report. It's uh, <coughs> part of this packet, but it's also in the drive. Um, so, in the interest of time, <coughs> if anyone has any questions in that 10 plus page report, please let me know. Um, but for the interest of time, I don't think I'll go through the entire thing tonight. Okay. Any highlights you want to list over there? Um, just a, just a few. Um, <coughs> the uh, administrative team continues to work on their own professional development training in regards to leader and me. And uh, if you um, actually, it's called Dare to Lead. And just to sum it all up, it's the ultimate playbook for developing brave leaders and courageous cultures. Book. It's a collection of four skill sets that are 100% teachable. It's learning practices that requires brave work, tough conversations, and showing up with a whole heart. And that's pretty much the professional development we'll continue to do as a leadership team. It teaches us how to be better leaders. Um, and there you'll also see a lot of pictures from the UB Tech um, training that we did through the grant that we received. We were um, Nationwide, we were one out of 22 schools 
that received this grant to bring um, robotics to each class. And so we had the administrators go through along with the <coughs> tech people, uh, the training on how to use the software. And some of the pictures you see there is some of our administrators actually building the robots um, that the students will have access to. And each school will have access to these kits. I believe we have something like 22 kits that will be dispersed throughout all the schools. And they can be signed out on a regular basis. It's designed to enhance the different curriculums that we're using. It's not to replace. Um, and it can also be used for summer programs and after school programs. Um, so we're excited about that. That's the, the highlights. Within the next few weeks, the new um, SU website will be totally rolled out. It'll be, it's uh, met today with um, <coughs> technology director and we're just making some final touches on it to make sure it's how we want it to look. We, did, we sent out um, a few surveys in regards to having people look at it before we went live. So we're continuing to tweak on, tweak it based on the feedback we get from teachers, administrators, um, even board members. So, uh, so far so good. I, I think you'll like it. It'll be much user friendly, especially for board members and the public who want to access information. So hopefully we'll roll that out within the next, probably beginning of next week. So. Yes, thank you. Any questions for our superintendent? <coughs> <coughs> we'll move on to the principal's report. I've already done a lot of talking tonight. We're so going to hold you off. Go on. All right. Uh, business manager Edie is not here. <coughs> Do you have something to give out? I believe she did all the financial. financial oh, yeah. So we got stuff that she had that budget meeting prior to this one. <coughs> <coughs> so, did everybody get one of these from Edie? Jack, okay, I want okay. budget. Uh, I don't seem to have there, this. No, I don't have that. <laughs> really hard to read. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Committee's policy is nothing. Nope. Get that on there twice. Um, schedule a building and grounds meeting. Chris, do you have a date in mind or something you trying want to do? Um, I don't necessarily have the need for a buildings and grounds. Okay, that's, that's all we need to know. I'd much rather walk the grounds when it's better weather. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Springtime. Uh, WNESU board meeting review. Mr. Clark? Well, <laughs> Molly, the M in my middle name stands for meeting, and without a prop from perhaps Chris Pratt or someone else who was at the meeting. I cannot give you the highlights because that was a lot of meetings ago. Okay. Yeah. This is the, the the budget meeting for no, the SU or the SU? The SU meeting. Yes. Okay. Okay, next item we're going to look at is unfinished, unfinished business, FY21 budget committee update and recommendation. Who wants that? You want me to do that? So we all have the budget in front of us of seven million seven hundred and fifty six four hundred and sixty six oh six. Chris gave us a no Edie gave us fourteen point seven seven for equalized pupil, correct? Uh, fourteen. Fourteen equalized pupil drop. Drop. Yeah. Lower. We have in the surplus $121,811. And Chris, I wrote it down. What was the number? Hold on, I got it. $46,811. Is, is what I am recommending <coughs> that the board <coughs> the article um, use as the amount to set aside for maintenance projects okay. and then I, I just want to remind folks because we're talking about this big bond and when we were with budgets I talked about how we haven't really done that to the detriment of the budget we had uh, a loan that we took out for the lights that were 
Um, cost us $20,000 a year to pay back over about six years, but we literally saved $20,000 a year in electricity, so it paid for itself. But um, we have done a number of major projects here, not the least of which is the air handling. And we were able to do that both from the budget and from reserve funds because of doing these kinds of things. So even though we set aside maybe 30,000 last year, yep. yeah, if we set aside another 46, something. then when big ticket items <clears throat> come down the pike, we don't have to go to the taxpayers for money. Here's so last year we set aside $31,811. Okay. So do we take the 75,000 off this 7,656 figure? Well, I mean, it doesn't work. What it really comes off of, if we had the tax sheet in front of us, it would come off. Yes, you can think of it that way, but it comes off of education spending. I was just it, looking for the number for the. No, you don't take it off of that. Okay. That gets folded onto the revenue page. Okay. So I that's understand. part of the revenue that pays for <clears throat> that yep. amount. So. It, it reduces the amount need to, that needs to be raised for tax by tax. Exactly, but you're approving an amount that we're going to spend. That's why, again, I hate to beat a dead horse, we traditionally here spend way more time in decision making on the tax sheet and less time on the bottom line. The bottom line matters, but... So, so can we get a motion on the table, <clears throat> sorry, to... Uh, recommend the seven million seven hundred fifty-six thousand four hundred sixty-six oh six, yeah. and then we can get some discussion. Is it seven six five six? Well, I got my glasses on. Seven, I'm reading seven, seven six million, five six four six six, six, four, six, 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 six oh six. six oh six. Yeah. I'll move. Right. Okay. Second, if required. Yes, please. Okay, now let's have discussion. Anyone have any questions for Chris on the budget? Okay. Then let's vote on recommending that figure again is seven million six hundred and fifty six thousand four hundred and sixty six dollars and six cents. <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. that number yep. okay okay we've already done 8a we're gonna move on to 8b hmm. well, oh, we, just I think we just did that yep. yeah, second two lines okay sorry guys approve warning articles so that number I've got do people want hard copies of those? Because I printed some out the, of the warning article with holes in it. The warning article, yeah. We have that. I gave. Uh, that may be the. It was printed out for budget. We may not have yeah. one. Yeah. For some, yeah. may not have one. All right. Pass a few around. Oh, I wouldn't mind one. Yeah. Yeah. Priscilla doesn't have it. So this is where we fill in the numbers. This is the fill in the blanks. Fill in the blanks yep. part. Thank you. One dollar. Article six. So it's essentially Article Six and Seven that were forty-six oh. eight. <coughs> you got it already. Ask. <coughs> <we're, coughs> so, if you take a look at Article Five, um, that number that you just approved goes in the shall the voters of the Union High School District Number Twenty-Seven approve the. Let's to expand that number. That's going to go in there. Could we have one more time, please, Chris? That number is, well, actually, from the minutes. Seven million six hundred fifty-six thousand four hundred sixty-six and six cents. There you go. You can fill that in yourself. What we do not have for you right now <coughs> is that required part. It is estimated that if this proposed budget if approved, it is estimated that this proposed budget if approved will result in education spending of. So education spending is a number on that tax sheet that is less than that amount. It's less than that amount by grant money that's pulled out, you know, various things is pulled out, but that's the amount of money that the taxpayers would, would have to fund. Also that $75,000 of rolled over surplus would come with 
come out of that education spending. So that's where the subtraction would happen. So I guess if you are going to make a motion to approve this warning, it would be to have Edie put the correct numbers in there. Yep. So there's that number, and then there's the, this projected spending per equalized pupil is blank higher than spending for the current year. So she has to put that in there. Quite honestly, we have never used that for decision making. I mean, the reality is if our budget is up by 4.9%, then the spending per kid is up by 4.9%, but that's, it, it's, if it shows that it's up by 15% or 20%, it kind of misinforms the taxpayers. But in any event, that would be the number, the correct number would be put in by Edie. Yep, I understand. Um, so that's Article 5. Article 6, let me speak to this before, before I read it to you. Um, when we first started the conversation about the driveway, we didn't know if it was going to cost us five hundred thousand or five million dollars. Quite honestly, we didn't know what. And I picked those two numbers. That those weren't like the practical range. We just didn't know how much it was going to be. When we were talking about it from a building and grounds perspective, we knew that we had some other reasonably big ticket items that we might want to pay attention to with a single bond, depending upon how much that prioritized project was going to cost. And so, I'm the one that drafted that article. I put it together with 1.6 million there, not trying to steer the vote in any direction. We just had to have something in there. Um, as we talked about here, 1 million is kind of the number to get at least three of those phases done, but maybe more depending on how the bid bidding goes. So, but I have included in this article the possibility of if we take out a loan for X amount, and we get the driveway done with $100,000 less than that, the opportunity for the board to decide through this article that we want to spend that other $100,000 on auditorium upgrades, because that has also been discussed um, at Buildings and Grounds. Um, but I want to emphasize, that's why it reads the way that it does. It's not like trying to sneak something in. It's just, that's what, but it doesn't have to be phrased that way. So, um, having said that, what we have now is to see if the Union District, Union High School District of 27 shall vote to authorize its board of directors to negotiate and enter into a loan, bond is what I guess it would say, for up to 1.6 or not to exceed, however you want to say that, $1.6 million to be paid back over a 20-year period for the purpose of, and this again is why it's phrased the way that it is, one, removal and replacement of the paved areas of the driveway and parking areas on school property to include any necessary upgrades to the flow and management of wastewater runoff and any related improvements to the sidewalk and patio areas, and two, upgrades to the auditorium and authorize the board to expend said funds. The priority for the use of these funds will be <coughs> with projects related to item number two being funded through this loan only after all expenses for item number one have been covered. So that's the article. Um, and what is up to you folks is to figure, do you want to do that at all? And if you want to do it, how much money do you want to ask the taxpayers for? I'm going to put a motion on the table just to for discussion. I'm not because I'm absolutely wedded to it, um, but I would make a motion uh, that we shall authorize the board of directors to <coughs> enter into a loan not to exceed one million dollars to be paid back over 20 years for the purposes of removal and replacement of the paved areas, the driveway, and parking areas on the school property to include necessary upgrades of waste water runoff and any related improvements to the sidewalk and patio areas, period. And that's fine. Um, yeah. To keep it simple. Yeah. Um, so if I, I just want to speak to my motion. Um, Let me give you a second, Stephen. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Speak to the motion uh, that that includes on your, on your chart here, uh, $1 million would essentially do the green driveway, the red parking lot, and the blue bit in front of the school, which is basically the public face of the school 
It does not include the parking out back. It does not include the uh, school bus parking um, uh, or the road up to Hadley Field, um, other than necessary drainage there. And um, it uh, is in hopes that, that a bids for, for that project will come in with within with that million dollars. Um, as far as leaving out the auditorium, um, I am worried about uh, um, people not being clear about what money is being borrowed for. I'm also worried about the fact that we might, um, if bids came under that, if paving is what we're doing and the bids come in at 850, we can take a loan out at 850 sure. Sure. and we we don't have to take out extra in case the auditorium sure. wants doing sure. in addition we do say put this money aside for building projects out of our reserve fund or you know building our out of the surplus money as we intend to this year as well and which I think is very good use of that money is to spend it on things like air handlers or the auditorium um, so I think it's a responsible amount and on a quick calculation of the cost over 20 years of a 3% loan, which is a somewhat high borrowing rate for now, it would be about $66,000 a year. Um, and lastly, I think this is an excellent time to borrow money for a long-term project because I'm sure the uh, rate won't stay uh, that low for 20 years. So if we can get it fixed at some decent rate, then we're happy. So I just want to make make sure that I'm clear about what the board is considering. <clears throat> As you spoke to the motion, your um, emphasis would be on sections one, two, and three. Sure. Um, but what the motion is, is for a much more general consideration of parking lot, drainage, driveway upgrades. And the reason I think that's significant, I want to make sure that we don't tie our hands through a motion to those three areas, because if we get the opportunity to take out a million dollar bond and that can get sections one, two, three, and four done. I just want to confirm the motion is for the language essentially that's in this article taking out the auditorium stuff. So not to exceed a million dollars. Not to exceed a million cents. dollars, yes. Exactly. The period after paved areas, is that right? Um, yeah. uh, at, uh, at patio, uh, areas. patio areas, period. Improvements to the sidewalk and patio areas, period. Um, and then, and authorize the board to expense said funds. And authorize, yes, please. <laughs> Add that part in. Yes, uh, yeah, and, and and authorize the board to expend said funds. Thank you. <clears throat> Any discussion? Yep. <coughs> I don't know if this would be done, sep done separately, probably. I still, believe, um, I still disagree. But at the same time, I would like this to be voted by Australian ballot, like Article 5. Uh, oh, it should be. And it should be. So you can propose an amendment to the motion to get it done that way. Okay, so I make that amendment, or would you accept that amendment? I would accept that as a friendly amendment, because I, I, I am aware that nobody comes to our annual meetings. Yeah. Now, I, but if we had a million dollars out there, maybe they, people they would still come. Would, if we had the budget so. every year at the meeting, <laughs> right. we would get some people. I'm sorry, it doesn't hurt my feelings. Maybe we honestly. should be doing that. They can come to talk about it. They, um, they never do. Won't show. They never. So, um, uh, I, I think that's a a a, a reasonable. <laughs> Thank you. So there has been an amendment to Friendly the motion. Amendment, yeah. To, to have it voted, have it voted on, on this art, our article will be voted upon by Australian ballot at each member town's voting place, just like the Article Five. Just like it says. Second. This, who made the second to that? I'm waiting. I thought David was going to. He's smiling at me. <laughs> I'm seconding Deb's Thank amendment. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Of the amendment? <laughs> of the amendment. <laughs> Opposed? No. Opposed. So we're going to, so it's been a, <laughs> approved that we're going to vote on this on Australian ballot. Yep, sorry. No, yeah. And then we have to vote on the main Now I have to vote on the motion right article on yeah. the article oh yeah that, i made the wrong motion. <laughs> 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 i said you i meant to say yes i meant to say yes say yes to no to that one i was going to say i, was I, was like, I, I did make an error a little confused okay back 
uh, okay, now we're on the main motion. Yes, sir. And I just want to, a lot of numbers being thrown around here, and uh, I want a sense as to whether or not everyone is comfortable with the with the one million versus the one six. And the reason simply is that while, you know, well, well, there's a part of you that hates both of these. The reality is that interest rates are at a low right now, and you know it would be it would kind of in the parlance suck if we did we approved one million this year at three percent, and then approved the other six five years from now at eight percent. I'm not sure that that buys you a whole lot of savings. So I'm just I, want, I just kind of want that issue kicked around a little bit before we go to a final vote. I thought on that, if you look at the um, Stevens Associates little memo there, um, the sections one, two, and three add up to a uh, shade more than a million, yes. um, uh, but very small shade. The other sections add up to nearly 600,000. Uh, yep. I don't think they're worth it. I don't think it's worth it. Number one, <coughs> WNSU can pay for the parking of their, on their buses. Uh, why should we pay it out back up, yes. when we um, when nobody sees it? And I mean, we it, it gets parked on, but it's functional. And um, is Jim yeah, Bell yeah, still here? No, Jim's not here. But yeah, yeah, but but anyway, I I I get the feeling that we can get by just fine with the current um, gravel road up to Hadley Field. Um, so I, I just don't think it's, I don't think that 600 or nearly $600,000 extra is actually worth spending at all. Okay. That, that was, that was my <coughs> actually in, in doing this. Just want to be sure that we were all clear on that. David? I just want to say that <coughs> if the member wanted to uh, amend the motion and add the six in, that he certainly could do so, but I haven't I'm, sensed I, any I'm particular. Not, I'm, I'm not doing that now. I, Jack, I haven't sensed oh. any particular enthusiasm at this table for making that amendment. So unless you're <laughs> going to do it, I think we could probably get on to the vote. I just wanted a clarification of why that number was picked. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, we are ready <coughs> to vote <coughs> on to a approve Article 6 to be on Australian ballot and for one million dollars. Any questions? Can I put my name in it? Hmm? Can I sort of stamp my name in the pavement? When it comes sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet you down back and we'll all put yeah, our so names sure. in that. Or put a foot in it or something. I think there's some concrete already with your initials in it. Somewhere from back in the 70s, maybe, Mr. Gage. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Article 7. What we have for a number in Article 7, shall the Union High School District number 27 apply the sum of $46,811 from the fiscal year of FY19 fund balance to create a reserve fund to be used for capital improvements at the Bellows Falls Union High School and authorize the board to expend said funds. What's the number again? $46,811. Can I have a motion? I'll move that motion. Mark. Thank you, Colin. Second? Second. <coughs> yes. Any discussion? I will also note that, um, again, this is intended to send um, fully 1% of our should, budget, which is going to be more than 1% of education spending, so more than 1% of what we're asking from the taxpayers. Um, and it may be more than that because it does not yet include what may be small but not insignificant surpluses from the WNESU. Those aren't in there yet. So by taking that much out, we should at least have 75,000 rolled over. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor of this article, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 8, does that need? That doesn't have any numbers that we haven't already had. We need to just approve them. Chris, what do you do? Uh, yeah, I would just, okay. doing the rest, I would just add All right. to it. 
Article 8. Oh, oh there's, Article 8 has, it does have a typo in it. Just it, there shouldn't be a semicolon before the word before the word clerk. It, it should be not. either a comma or. Oh yeah. Mm. <coughs> Sorry, just drama <coughs> that. Just. So Article 8 reads: <laughs> Shall the Union High School District Number 27 vote to pay its district officers compensation in the following amounts: Board Chair 550, Board Members 450, Treasurer 600, and Clerk 125. Second. All those in favor of Article 8, please say aye. 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 Opposed? So ultimately, Molly, I think after, after refining all of these articles, you'll want a motion to approve the warning, and you'll probably need to add into that with the um, <coughs> spaces in Article 5 to be filled in by the business manager no. with the correct numbers. Okay. I make the motion we approve the warning uh, as developed with the uh, correct numbers filled in on Article 5 by our business manager. Thank you. So a motion has been made and seconded to accept the articles on the warning with ED being able to put the numbers in that we're missing. Is there any more discussion? Uh, the only thing, <coughs> excuse me, the only thing I need to point out is I am not the clerk of the board. Ms. Lambert is the clerk of the board under uh, district officers, or excuse me, school directors. Question on that too. It's got Allison Bigford listed Good under question. the top part as clerk of the board. Clerk of the meeting is that That's what it is? She clerk she's of the clerk meeting. of the so annual this is meeting. meeting. So no. this is the we're well, going to get clerk to this. of the board. She's clerk the, of the annual meeting. We'll we'll talk and about this Molly, after we get through these articles. Are you chair of the annual meeting? Excuse me. Are you chair of the annual meeting with that? Because yes. that should be that at the top so let's take care of the articles we're all set with the articles and we'd like to approve the articles and then we'll move on to this further information all those in favor of accepting the articles as written with ed putting in the numbers that aren't there yet please say aye aye opposed it's already <laughs> That's pretty vague but. okay so on <laughs> this sheet after that, further notices, informational meetings. We had some corrections that we wanted done. I thought that Allie was, she is the town clerk that comes to the meetings, isn't that Kathleen, correct? That's Kathleen Neehawk. She's the, uh, Allison's town clerk of Westminster, but she's I, I, the clerk I, I, of yeah. the yeah. annual meeting. I, the I clerk record, of the board, I'm, excuse me, Jack. She's, let me finish. She, Allison's, um, now you Maybe I should not yeah, try you said it exactly yeah, correctly. Yeah. Clerk of, you are. of the Westminster. Yes. And the then, meeting. Yes. Clerk of the board is you. Of the, yes. So the it's written pages. wrong at the top. Right. Wrong. Too. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she's clerk of annual of meeting. Annual yeah. meeting. And so that's why possibly. Oh, wait, does it okay. say it in last year's report? Um, here. Yes. Yeah, I want yeah. my vote clerk recorded. No, and the reason I'm voting no for that last motion was because of concerns that Article 8 is not correct, and uh, and I just want to make certain we get this cleaned up. I, I, I know that time is of the essence for some of this, but I, I just I don't think that language is right, and I, I think it's not clear which clerk we're talking about that's getting the $125, yeah. which treasurer we're talking about, uh, and, and those types of things need to get tidied up. Uh, before we go forward, in my view, but uh, you know the vote has already been cast and carried. But I, I just want for the record my objection noted. Yeah. So, this was last year's warning. Yeah, yeah, we've got right it there here. Either. That's the same. The mistake's been going on for a while, but so there's district officers, right? And then there's school directors and positions within 
this board. That's right. So. But she, Allie has always been the one that comes and takes. <coughs> She's the one that sits with us <clears throat> as right. as the representative. So all I'm saying is, for as far as the warning is concerned, right. the way it's presented here is the way it was approved last year. So I'm not here to say that we might not have made a mistake last year, Thank but I have to tell you that if I went back, and I have probably 15 years of these in my office, only grabbed one, but. Let's, I think David's got get some all. help. We want to okay. see it. Okay. Yeah, David's <laughs> got <laughs> I, I have a floor jack, and what I w want to say um, is that obviously we have established a precedent. However, that does not mean that we cannot correct it, and I believe that under Robert's rules of order that if we have not moved on to um, a new item of business yet for consideration, that a member who voted with the majority uh, can request a reconsideration and we I believe can do that and can go back and correct article 8 if we wish to do it I do and I was gonna ask you how to do that so, so we'll do okay well I, get it I, fixed. I would like to request a reconsideration of our last action what's wrong with article 8 it 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 the uh, um, uh, the clerk question mark bit, bit there um, oh, I see. You know, it's, it's just it, it, as as Jack was pointing out, it's not it's not correctly written. Um, then there's then there's problems with the the stuff listed at the bottom as well. Right. So is there a sense? I just want, that district officer's clerk, Ali Bigwood, is wrong. May I speak to my motion? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer uh, Chris's question. I I believe that it would be fairly simple to remake the motion and. Uh, indicate that the $125 stipend is for the clerk of the meeting. I think that that, right. that would probably clerk of the meeting. Uh, clear and, and that the treasurer confusion also, up. Is, is, what's the treasurer uh, 600 for? Yeah, that's Kathy Meehawk, so that's, that's, that's the district treasurer. officer, mm -hmm. not, not the person yes, appointed right. as treasurer. The there's, there's, no, there's no treasurer of this board yes. that sits at this table. So we could, she could leave that treasurer out, couldn't we? Well, if we leave her out, she's not going to be compensated. Oh, I'm sorry. Where does that $600 go? Goes to Needhawk. District like treasurer. Say district treasurer. And I'd district say clerk. yeah. That's yes. why my district request. treasurer. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. District and, treasurer and, and meeting clerk. Is that yeah. is that right, Dave? If we just put district treasurer and district, district clerk. Yes, yeah, she signs the checks. Well, district treasurer and meeting clerk. Well, meeting. technically, it is a district <laughs> officer, so district Jesus. clerk wouldn't oh, be wrong. Okay, district clerk wouldn't be wrong. Wouldn't That's be wrong. True. Okay. And it would mm -hmm. be consistent. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, thank you for. But, okay, I uh, I I've. Uh, Made a motion. I haven't gotten a second oh, yet. Oh, second. <coughs> Point also, of order, though. La language change. I mean, there's a, there's a grammar problem here too. Sorry. Point of order, uh, Madam Chair. If I, the maker of the original motion was Deb, so don't you have to? No, it just has to no. be one okay. of the. Okay. Of okay. The okay. All right. The affirmative. All right. So, we have a motion on the floor and seconded okay. to reconsider the last vote to approve these articles. We are correcting Article 8 to read, show the Union High School District number 27 vote to pay its district officers compensation in the following amounts. Board Chair, $550. Board Members, $450. District Treasurer, $600 and district clerk $125. Is that correct, Jack? <coughs> Thank you. Is there any more discussion? All those in favor of correcting can the writing in Article 8? First? Can, we should also put down underneath then district clerk under Allison's name at the bottom there. We haven't gotten there yet. We haven't gotten, okay. we haven't we haven't gotten, gotten that far yet. Okay. It's just on the articles. <laughs> just trying to work on our articles. <laughs> Anything else? Point of order. The isn't the, the reconsideration place. vote separate from the correction itself? It's separate. I think it is. Um, yeah. Well, let's vote on the reconsideration first then. 
All those in favor of reconsidering the articles the way they're written, please say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Opposed? Okay, may I have a motion to fix Article 8? I'll make that motion. No second, though. As fixed. Okay. <laughs> Josh, do you need the article again? No, Okay. Good. All those in favor of repairing Article 8 as read, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Article 8 has been fixed. Thank you. Jack, we good? Thank you, David, for your help. <laughs> okay. <coughs> now we're moving on to the bottom of this page, further notice informational meeting. This is really, I don't think we need to make any movement on this, but if we have some clerical errors, let's fix them. Um... The legal voters of, and residents of Bellis Falls Union High School District Number 27 are further warned at a public informational hearing <coughs> that will be held at the Bellis Falls Union High School Auditorium February 26 at 7 o'clock in the evening for the purpose of explaining Article 5. The legal voters of Bellis Falls Union High School District Number 27 are further notified that voters' qualification, registration, and absentee voting relative to Article 5 shall be provided in Chapter 43, 51, and 55 of Title 17. But, are we going to put the other article on there? Article 6 should sure. be on there also. So they're going to vote on Article 5 and Article 6. At Bios Red Belt. Correct. Yeah, see, we're, we're explaining Article 5. They're not voting on Article 5. Okay, so, and we're not going to... And we're, we're going to... So we can add six. explanation to Article 6, should, too? Yeah, I think we should. Explain Article 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're both Australian ballot. Right. We will, however, be voting on the uh, the, the <coughs> um, surplus funds being um, right. sent. Uh, the surplus funds being divided yes, up. That is by... Article 7 will be voted on on that, yep. on that yes. floor. It's not a big, big deal. So the, the chairperson is correct, the clerk of the board, and the, the district clerk is correct. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad. And it looks like we've got, looks like we're good. And then at the bottom, Priscilla's clerk in the long ago. Right. Oh, yep. So in the bottom of the school directors, it says Colin James is clerk and Priscilla is the clerk. Yep. Is the vote from the floor for Article 7 need to be included in that language? Ah, it does have to be in there, no. <clears throat> I mean, it, it, it's essentially a given that you're voting from the floor, unless you say otherwise. Right. I think we have this taken care of. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. I have a question. Yep. I do have a question on it. If articles two, three, and four are voted by ballot, so what does it mean? Paper ballot on the floor? Ballot. It doesn't just. Uh, instead of say. to elect a moderator, it doesn't. It, instead of just saying to elect a moderator, yes, it says and by it, ballot. It says by ballot. And on, I know the town and village one just says to elect, elect a moderator. But we don't really want to do ballot because. We're going to do a ballot, even if there's only five people at the meeting. All right, we'll do a ballot. <laughs> well, you can use paper ballot, that's fine. Well, okay. typically, if I may say so, what happens is that um, a, a motion is put on the floor to elect a moderator. A moderator is nominated, and then um, it has been past practice that someone will move to close nominations and direct the uh, moderator cast to one cast one ballot. And I think that's why you have the ballot the language. Ballot. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> We've approved the warning articles. Approved announced tuition. Do we have that, Chris? Uh, yes. So the motion I am looking for is an announced tuition of drum roll sixteen thousand eleven. Um, sixteen thousand five hundred. I'll move that motion. And that number comes from the budget that we've been working on. So. I'll second. 
motion has been made and seconded to approve the announced tuition of sixteen thousand five hundred dollars. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Chris, is there any appointments tonight? And no executive session. Uh, director's comments. Brenda. I'm all set. David. I just want to say I think we do a pretty good job of problem solving. I think we did well. <laughs> Priscilla. Yes, I really like the way the board works together. <laughs> Colin. Happy New Year. <laughs> Deb. Didn't realize that my term was running up until I saw the newspaper or something ago. What? So I pulled a petition and anyone who's interested in rocking him, interested in signing it so I can get it in in time. <laughs> I'd be grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Jack. Uh, this was one of those nights where there were multiple meetings that con that conflicted with each other. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been the I've had several of those in the last couple of weeks, but I'm glad uh, uh, much of the business of the board was taken care of quite well without my being here. I think that may mean something I should take into consideration. <laughs> uh, we take it that we have to solve that. Margo. Um, I see I my, my term is also like up and I want to say regretfully I won't be uh, running again um, sorry I, uh, my, my parents are needing a lot of elder care and, and evenings um, and so uh, I can't right now um, and uh, so I've enjoyed being on the board and I great to concur that it's nice that we work well together now and uh so if anybody <laughs> <No>. can <laughs> hey <laughs> it's, it's good it's good You're just done. <laughs> and it is um it is uh if anybody would like to pass the word on to the westminster to to run for the position it's much better if somebody can run for it rather than just sitting vacant um and uh so please get the word out uh that the um uh, that i won't be uh, running <coughs> somebody should Thank you. Anyone have any agenda items for next board meeting? If you do, email Chris or I. Date of next. So we had, just so everybody's here, we had a budget committee meeting scheduled for tomorrow just in case we needed it. We don't need it, so there's no meeting tomorrow night. Date of next board meeting is January 27th. If we need it, we'll let you know. And I declare this meeting adjourned.